I'm sure as you guys have been watching some videos or some streams, people always talk about libbing. I'm libbing my weapon. Oh my god, my liberation is coming soon. Oh, I can't wait to lib my weapon. What are these guys talking about? What they're talking about is fully unsealing and liberating their Genesis weapon. And if you don't know what a Genesis weapon is, it is the absolute best and strongest weapon in the entire game. Way stronger than Arcane weapon. And it's what all the end gamers have. And it's what you need to get a lot of damage. So by the end of this video, you're going to learn how you can get a fully liberated Genesis weapon, what the requirements are, and what the Genesis weapon does. So let's start with what the Genesis weapon is and what it does. So obviously, it's a weapon that you can equip that goes after Arcane weapon, and it is the best weapon in the entire game. The stats on it are crazy. You can see that from the Genesis Katana, there is about a 150 attack difference, and the flames go much higher. You'll also notice at the bottom of the Genesis weapon, it says this lucky item counts towards any set. So what that means is the Genesis weapon fills in the weapon slot of any set effect that has a weapon in it. So for example, the arcane set effect on the right side of the screen, you see how it says choose one arcane umbra weapon. Because this set effect has a weapon slot in the set effect, the Genesis weapon can fit into it even though it's not an arcane weapon. So I still get the five set arcane. Now, if I was wearing a CRA hat, CRA also has a weapon in the set effect. So it would fill in that Fafnir weapon slot as well and the arcane weapon slot as well. So it double dips on set effects which makes it super, super, super strong and can be equipped with so many different sets. And if you have the Eternal set, it actually is even in the Eternal set as well. So it works even way, way, way further into the game. Now, the Genesis weapon itself also gives you two skills that make you way stronger. So first of all, you have Tenadian Ruin. This is a passive that increases your final damage by 10%. So straight up, it gives you 10% final damage, which is a huge, huge passive. It can also be an effect that could be toggled on and off, but I honestly think it looks ugly, so I don't keep that shit on. And you get the Aeonian Rise when you fully liberate it, which is a two minute cooldown, 10 second iframe that you could run around in. There's no restriction and you could even cancel it early and it does a big explosion damage around you. So you can clearly see that this weapon is more than worth getting and is extremely strong. If you want to talk about combat power, the difference from the Genesis weapon and no Genesis weapon for me was around 37 mil combat power. It varies depending on how strong your arcane weapon was but for me it was around 37 mil combat power which is a lot a lot i gained so much combat power just from the genesis weapon alone now how do we get this genesis weapon to get the Genesis weapon, you're going to have to complete the Genesis weapon quest line, which takes eight months to complete. That's why a lot of people say, I can't wait to live. I can't wait to live. I can't wait to live. The earlier you start it, the faster you live because it takes eight months no matter what. So once you hit level 255 in the light bulb, there's going to be a 255 level quest called Genesis weapon after the destined battle so it's going to teleport you to this map called the evening conference pavilion it's a special map that you can only access while you are doing the genesis liberation quest line and you just talk to Nineheart and make sure you accept this quest. And the first quest is going to ask you to defeat the Black Mage. So the Black Mage boss fight is pretty difficult for a lot of players. And you are going to need to be at a certain level of power to even want to attempt it. But before we talk about how much damage you need to do Black Mage, we need to talk about the key that is required to even enter the boss. So Black Mage is special. Unlike all the other bosses, you actually need to get a key to enter the boss. And to get that key, you need to get these items called Sparks of Determination and Shadows of Annihilation. So you need 50 Sparks of Determination and one Shadow of Annihilation to get one key to attempt Black Mage once. Now, of course, you can enter practice mode as much as you want, but to do the real run, you need the key. Now, how do I get the Sparks of Determination and how do I get the Shadow of Annihilation? So if you look in the guide and you look at the boss content tab, you'll see that certain bosses actually drop the sparks. So for example, Dark Nell and Gloom drop sparks of determination. It doesn't even have to be the hard or chaos variant of them. Even their normal variant drops sparks of determination. You got to make sure that you're killing these bosses as early as possible so that you can start stacking up on sparks so that when you eventually do Black Mage, you are able to enter the boss. Now, the most difficult one to get is the Shadow 
of Annihilation. The Shadow of Annihilation only drops from hard Vihila. It does not drop from normal, only from hard. So you have to make sure that you're clearing up to hard Vihila to even attempt Black Mage. If you were to clear Hard Dark Knell and Gloom, you get 30 sparks a week from them both. And from Vihila, you get three Shadows of Annihilation. So if you're just doing the weekly bosses, you would get a key about every two weeks. But there's actually another way to get sparks as well. When you're level 255, you will have access to the Tenebris Daily Quest, the Moonbridge one, Lab one, and Lamina one. And every single time you complete these three quests, you get three sparks. If you're only 245 and you have the Moonbridge one, you only get one spark. You get one spark per quest. So if you were to do this daily every single day, which you should because it gives a lot of XP as well, you would get 21 sparks from it a week. And if you remember, I just said you get 30 from the bosses. So 30 plus 21 is 51. If you get the 51 sparks a week from doing the dailies as well, and you get the three Shadow of Annihilations from Vihila every single week, you would be able to get one key every single week. Now, the cool thing about these sparks is they are transferable. If you have multiple characters at 255 plus, but you've never pushed past that to get Black Mage, you could get a lot of sparks and you won't have to worry about keys. So not only do you need these two items, you also have to convert it into a key. And you convert it into a key by talking to Lorelei in this map 1-1 in Lamina over here. All you have to do is talk to her and she's going to say, would you like to trade Sparks of Determination and Shadow of Annihilation for Fragment of Destiny? This is the key that you need to enter Black Mage. You need this in your etc tab to even enter so make sure when you're running at a party that everybody has this item or else you won't enter it's going to say somebody doesn't have the item can't enter so boom fragment of destiny so now i can enter black mage on a real run now let's talk about the black mage boss itself so if you're looking at the boss tab and you see bosses like vihila slime lucid lotus black mage is on a different level than these bosses it has a lot more mechanics and is quite a bit more complicated if you want a full entire comprehensive black mage guide i actually already have one on my youtube channel and it lives up to this day because the mechanics haven't changed since then but generally my honest recommendation for being able to enter black mage in a party is you want to be these things on the screen right now you want to be at least level 270 you want to have max arcane force because black mage requires max arcane force to do normal damage and you want to be able to at least solo hard Damien. I've personally found that if somebody is able to at least solo hard Damien, they have technically the damage requirement to do and contribute in Black Mage. Now, granted, this is around the bare minimum I would recommend for most people. Obviously, if you're very, very experienced, this isn't your first time liberating, you could do it at less than this. But for most people, I would say you want to be at least level 270, max arcane force, and at least be able to solo hard Damien. If you want a more comfortable clear, which I've personally seen a lot of people go down this route, is they get to level 275, they're able to solo hard Lucid, and they have max arcane force. If you're level 275, you're able to solo hard Lucid, and you have max arcane force, and you have a party of six of people running at this spec, you are more than strong enough to do Black Mage. Now, the reason I didn't give a combat power recommendation is because combat power doesn't take into fact a lot of different things. Doesn't it take into fact IED? It doesn't take into fact your hex the skills at all and different classes have different amounts of combat power so it's really hard to give a ballpark range of combat power because it varies so much but i've personally found that if you use a bossing metric like oh i can solo hard damien i could solo hard lucid it's more accurate and you're gonna need to solo these bosses for your liberation quests anyways so that would be my general recommendation as a starting black mage keep in mind that it's okay to not clear black mage even within five ten runs it is way more difficult than the bosses before that that, so you're gonna have to grind it out with your party if you're a solo story player and you want a solo black mage i would gauge how fast you can do phase one because phase one black mage is the hardest phase in the whole fight especially solo and if you could two or three burst it then you have enough damage to do black mage solo so that's how i would gauge it now let's talk about the genesis liberation quests so in the light bulb once you're 255 you'll have the after the destined battle quest and it's going to ask you to kill Black Mage. So once you kill Black Mage, you can turn in the quest. And now you start the boss killing gauntlet. So the first boss that you're going to have to kill is Von Leon. And the thing is, these Genesis Liberation quests, they're not like normal like killing a boss normally so for example with von leon the genesis liberation quest when you press up on the portal there's going to be a story button and it's going to re require you to take off all of your items except for your weapon and secondary you can keep your symbols on too so it makes it really really easy because you have your symbols on so your equips you are literally going to have to take off your gear 
So when you do the Von Leon quest, when it asks you to do the story mode, your inventory, your equips are going to look like this. You have just your blank Genesis weapon. When you kill Black Mage the first time, you're going to get the blank one, the sealed one that has no stats on it or anything, no stars, no pot. You're going to have to do it like this and your secondary on. You could keep your symbols on, so it makes it really easy. Honestly, the symbols give you way more than enough damage. But yeah, you're going to have to do it like this. And then once you kill Von Leon, you go and turn in the quest. Now you're going to have a new quest called Traces of Arcarium, and you're going to have to do the same thing. You're going to have to go kill Arcarium. Now, just like Von Leon, when you press up on the portal on Arcarium, when you're in the quest, there's going to be a story button. And it's the exact same thing. You are going to only be able to do it with your weapon and secondary and nothing else. Well, your symbols too. Exact same thing with Arcarium. Now, here's the thing though. After you kill Arcarium, you're going to see in the quest that it's going to ask for something called a black mage remnant which i will show you on the screen right now from this point on once you kill arcarium every single time you kill black mage it's going to drop a black mage remnant always make sure you pick up this item because the quest for all of the liberations is going to require you to kill a boss and turn in a black mage remnant now the reason this takes eight months is because black mage you can only kill it once a month meaning you can only get one black mage remnant a month which means you can only complete one quest a month. So you're going to be constantly doing that. You're going to kill the boss and then kill Black Mage and then turn in the quest. So after you kill Arcarium, you get the remnant, you turn in the quest. Next quest, Magnus, same thing. You go to Magnus, press up on the portal. He's going to have a story mode. And for Magnus, exact same as Arcarium and Von Leon. You can only do it with your weapon, secondary, and symbols. And then you get the remnant again. Next time you clear Black Mage and you turn in the quest. Now, the first three quests are very, very easy because it's just Von Leon, Arcarium, and Magnus. The next quest after that is Hard Lotus. Now, obviously, Hard Lotus is much more difficult than Magnus and Arcarium, and you can put on all of your equips from this point on. You don't have to do it all naked, but the thing about Hard Lotus is you have a 20% final damage debuff when you're in the boss, which means you are doing 20% less damage. So if you started this quest and you think, oh, I could do Hard Lotus, no problem problem i've done like a 29 minute run before you're not gonna be able to clear during the genesis quest you have to be able to clear hard lotus a bit comfortably already and then for the genesis quest it's 20 percent fd less it's quite a bit slower and then after you kill lotus again you get the remnant from clearing black mage and you turn in the quest after that is damien now the only stipulation about clearing damien is you have five lives instead of ten but you do all your damage so it's pretty easy to be honest because damien it's kind of hard to die in and then after that, you get your remnant from clearing Black Mage and you turn in the quest. Next up is Hard Will. And the thing about Hard Will is his little special perk in this boss is he does 10% more damage in all of his attacks. Now, the interesting thing about Will, a lot of his attacks do 90% damage. Like the Tornado in P1, since it does 90%, it's going to kill you. Now, everything becomes a one shot that almost kills you. It becomes a one shot now. So it's way more dangerous in Hard Will. And going from Lotus and Damien, to will is a pretty big jump in terms of power that you need to clear now keep in mind that every single one of these quests is one month apart so you have a long time to get to the point from when you first started doing bm to when you're doing will to get strong enough to clear hard will and also starting at this point from will you can actually duo your quest you could do it with somebody who's doing the same quest as you but you both have a 50 percent nerf in your damage so it's actually still easier even if you have a 50% nerf because you can buff each other up, you can both clear the webs in phase three. So it's still easier. You can heal each other more with heal fans if you have them. But keep in mind that you can duo it. But honestly, it's it's the game gives you a lot of damage, especially with six job. I would recommend trying to solo it first. And again, you clear the boss, you get a remnant from BM and you move on to the next boss when you turn in the quest. Next up is Lucid. Now, the thing about Lucid is it's a normal fight, except you only have 50 potions. You have to make sure that when you enter the boss you equip the potions that they give you it gives you a special stack of 50 power elixirs unlike your other power elixirs so if you have them on your pet the power elixirs if they're not going to heal you if you have it on a keybind they're not going to heal you you have to put them on the keybind and you have to put them on your pet so that you can heal in the boss now a little bit of a pro tip is if you want to know how much damage you need to liberate all you need to do is solo lucid if you could solo hard lucid you could solo all the other bosses that you need to liberate because the hard lucid p3 wall is the highest wall that you need to break before you can liberate and then you get your remnant turn in the quest and you move on to v hilla v hilla is the last quest that's needed to complete 
your Genesis Liberation. The Vihila quest is actually a lot easier than normal Vihila for the first time out of all these quests. They're not harder. It's actually a lot easier because she starts at 75% HP. So she's three quarters as tanky as normal. So it's actually really, really, really easy. And then once you kill her, you get the remnant from killing BM after that. And you could turn in your quest. And once you turn in the Vihila quest, you are finished. You will be rewarded with a fully liberated Genesis weapon. It goes from being a sealed one that has zero stars, no pot or anything like that, to fully 22 stars. You actually can't even enhance it. So if you're thinking like, oh, I could go to 23. No, you can't even tap it. It's 22 stars. You can flame it. You can pot it. You can put a soul on it and you get the skills that come with it. Now, make sure that you do not flame the weapon before it is fully liberated. Along the liberation process, I believe after you hand in the Damien quest, you get this kind of like half liberated weapon that you can flame, but you can't pot it or star it. So it's trash. The arcane weapon is still better. But I've seen a lot of people flame it because you're able to flame it, but the flame does not carry over when you fully liberate it. So don't waste any flames on it. Only flame it when it is fully liberated. So some common mistakes that I always see when people are liberating their weapon is they always forget to turn in their quest. I have seen this so many times. Huge advice that I could give you guys is when you clear BM, make sure you always pick up the remnant. As soon as you enter the loot room and you break the box, make sure you pick up the remnant on the first quest. The first time you clear BM, there is no remnant. But every time after that, there is a remnant. So make sure you pick it up. And as soon as you get the remnant, turn in the quest and accept the next quest. I've seen this so many times where people get the remnant. They log off. They forget to turn in the quest. And then if you were to clear Black Mage again and you already have a remnant in your inventory, it's not going to drop one. And you wasted one month's clear and you are one month behind. And that's a long time of being a whole extra month behind. I've seen that happen before. So make sure you turn in the quest. But with that all being said, I hope this helped explain Genesis Liberation a bit more. Honestly, it's not as hard as I may have made it seem to be or others might have made it seem to be. The best thing you could do is honestly just try it. See if you could clear the bosses, get your practice in. It's really fun and you are rewarded with a super OP weapon at the end of it. So if this video helped you out, maybe consider helping me out by subscribing or watching some of my other videos. If you want to talk to me directly, I also stream almost every single day. And with that being said, have a wonderful day. Thank you so much to my beautiful members, Blazefire, Shooms, Uju, Shagad, Ravi Espa, Grim 4K, Koga, Pabo, Pikonir, Jesse, Dante Victory, Zats, and CK. I appreciate you guys so much.